All right, let's go ahead and dive on in. Welcome, everyone. My name is Lionel, and I will be your moderator and host for tonight. I am the manager of enrollment, and we're looking forward to providing some great information to all of you. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Before I do, I'd like to give a few tidbits of information. Um, if you have any questions, please place all your questions into the chat box. We do have my coworker and boss, Sue Barros, will be monitoring the chats. So if you have any questions, please place those in the chat box. We'll get to those at the end of the session. Uh, one other thing before I introduce everyone, application cycles will open at the end of this month. Please check out the websites for any and all updates. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see here. So I'd like to start by introducing everyone first and foremost. Um, first up, we'll have Dr. Ronald Amady, who is the head of the University of Queensland Oshner Clinical School. He'll be followed by Dr. Tamika Webb Detige. She's the deputy head of admissions and enrollment. And then we have third year incoming OMSA vice president, Linda John, who will give a little about her perspective. I'll go ahead without further ado, pass it over to Dr. Amity. Thank you so much, Lionel. If we can have the next slide, please. It's going to be our privilege this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you are, um, to share with you a little information about our partnership with the University of Queensland and the Oxford Clinical School. Next slide. Just to give you an idea where our geography is, 11, about 11,000 miles as the crow flies. Uh, our partnership has existed since 2009. And that partnership came about because our colleagues in Brisbane uh, were looking for clinical placements for their students. And we were looking for someone that was a powerhouse in research that we could learn from. And boy, we picked a great school. Next slide. A little bit about UQ. It's a top 50 global university, depending on what's, what data you look at on an annual basis this year. I think it's number 35. It has six different faculties that represent everything that you would typically find in a large uh, US uh, uh, university. Eight research institutes, which really are the, the backbone of everything that takes place in Brisbane. And 30 plus teaching and research sites offered throughout the state of Queensland in Australia. Oshner Health is located at the very southern end of the Mississippi River. We have 40 hospitals and 100 health centers throughout the states of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and soon the Florida Panhandle. We have over 1,330 employed physicians by Oshner Health, representing 90 medical specialties. And currently, based on U.S. News and World Report 2022 data, we are the number one hospital in the state of Louisiana. We're also the number one pediatric hospital in the state of Louisiana. Next slide. A little bit about our Doctor of Medicine program. Uh, from our incoming class this coming January, we'll be actually offering a refreshed new Doctor of Medicine program. And the vision for this particular program, and I'll quote it directly from the paragraph you see here, is to nurture and educate future medical graduates who are clinically excellent, who are great at team players, they're kind, they're compassionate, they serve responsibly, they're dedicated to the continual improvement of the health of the people and the communities across the globe that we are privileged to treat. It's a four-year postgraduate program. Since our inception in 2009, our uh, match rate uh, for our fourth year class has been 94%. The past two years, it's been 97 and 98% respectively. Completion in our program means you're eligible for ECFMG certification. And currently, we have graduates that are practicing in all 50 of the U.S. states. And when you do graduate from us, you're also qualified to practice in Australia, if that's your wish. And we do have a component of each class that returns to Australia for love of country or love of someone else. Next slide. Years one and two are all uh, based in Brisbane, Australia. 
And this is the clinical preparatory time. Year one will be focused on the foundations of medicine with year two, concentrating on developing the knowledge and skills required to practice medicine with a focus on the pathophysiology of the common conditions. Students in the new program will be learning, uh, become part of a learning family during the first year. And almost half of the learning opportunities in the second year will be in clinical settings. You're able to build your own unique medical degree through a range of student choice and enrichment opportunities, which also incorporate research into your medical degree if interested. Next slide. <clears throat> Years three and four will be hands-on practice in the clinical school here in New Orleans. Your learning will be grounded in the clinical workplace setting here in New Orleans, supported by structured teaching and learning activities. For example, hospital practice will concentrate on the major uh, core specialties of medicine and surgery. Women's, children's, and mental health will also be focused upon with mental health opportunities, OBGYN rotations, and rotations in pediatrics. Advanced hospital practice will be centered around rotations in anesthesia, ICU, ophthalmology, emergency medicine, orthopedics, and various medical specialties. The primary Care Plus component of years three and four will be centered in general practice, medicine in society, or rural and remote medicine opportunities. The final fourth year, particularly in the last six months of the fourth year, we will have an opportunity for a transition to practice semester, which will benefit our students primarily because they'll have a lot of more opportunities to participate in uh, away rotations, bettering their opportunities for the residency match. Next slide. As I mentioned, there are research opportunities, uh, both at UQ and at Ochsner Health, as we both have long traditions of academic excellence and scientific discovery. In addition to the MD degree, higher degrees of research are available. A Master of Philosophy is also available. A Doctor of Philosophy, for those of you that want to invest three years between the second and third year of the degree program that I just mentioned to you. Also, we provide an Ochsner Research Hub which gives you uh, access to opportunities that exist for research, not only in Brisbane, but also in New Orleans. And you can see a sampling of those bullet pointed on the left lower end of the screen. Next slide. Student support is a major focus of our collaboration between UQ and Ochsner. And that, that support really takes you through all throughout the four years of your, your training with us. It begins with medical student support services that are available to you throughout all four years and are very key in particular during the first year in trying to help you manage well-being, mental health, your time management, your work-life balance, and obviously adjusting to life in Australia. Uh, personal advisor network is available to you, uh, and that is further uh, emphasized during uh, your time with us in this particular curriculum, because we also have the UQ Ochsner Medical Societies. There are five of these, and the five medical societies actually represent the five founders of Ochsner Health, which is celebrating its 80th year in existence. Our medical societies are led by faculty that have been chosen with expertise in advising and coaching of medical students along the path. And social, they serve also as social units that promote a sense of community within the Ochsner cohort of students, particularly while you're in Brisbane. I might mention that the Brisbane component uh, of students each year is somewhere between 400 and 450, and 100 of those, 90 to 100 of those students are part of the UQ Ochsner uh, cohort. USMLE support is, is critical to uh, your, your success in the US match process. Uh, and you at the, um, the medical licensing exam uh, components, particularly step one, the boards, uh, you will see receive a lot of um, specialized training, particularly during your second semester and your second year in Brisbane to prepare you for not only uh, taking, but passing step one of the boards. Uh, there's also additional support for clinical knowledge CK and for step three preparation. Uh, as far as the student societies are concerned, we have uh, an Ochsner Medical Student Association uh, that uh, you will hear a little bit more about from Linda. And we also have numerous special interest groups once you arrive here in New Orleans that are student-led, and they represent specialty interest groups 
bringing together like-minded students for those that are thinking along the path of internal medicine or pediatrics or OB or surgery or whatever your specialty interest may be as we go forward. Next slide. How well do our students perform on the US MLEs? Well, I'll give you a, to date since um, we began our program, 88% um, first time pass rate. The current class of seniors uh, has a 97% first time pass rate, and average score as you can see of 225. And as you all know, that particular score is not going to be a numeric value on the go forward. It's gonna be a pass fail. Step two CK um, is, um, 97% the average scores you can see represented here. We're still formulating the end number for the scores for this year's graduates, but it's, it's at least as good, if not better than it was last year. Next slide. As far as step one preparation, we make available to all of our students access to uh, first aid, USMLE step one first aid, USMLE World Q Bank question bank, three practice examinations, um, a study guide that is, uh, is helping our students during the second semester of the second year. And as I mentioned, that's where the dedicated USMLE preparation course takes place. Uh, as far as step two CK preparation is concerned, still have access to USMLE World Q Bank and also some additional online resources. I might also add at this point that because uh, step two CS has gone away in the United States, as part of our arrangement with the University of Queensland, we actually have a mandatory year three uh, OSCE that is given. That's a 10 station OSCE that is provided in New Orleans and also in Brisbane and is a requirement for graduation from um, the program. And our uh, last year was the first year we uh, had to go through that particular OSCE all graduates, 100% of them uh, were successful in, 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 in um, passing the uh, level three OSCE. And we just gave the level three OSCE to the current uh, third years. And we'll know more about how well they did on that in about a month's time. And now I will transition over to my colleague in crime from uh, New Orleans, Dr. Tamika Webb. Tamika, all yours. Next slide. Hello, I'm Dr. Samika webb -Datige. When you go to medical school, your job is to successfully complete medical school and get into the match and find a residency. So here is a chart that shows the success of our school with a uh, match. Uh, the first column is about the years and we're gonna focus on 2022. The next column lists the number of positions that are available in the match. So you see that there are 39,205. And the next column is total applications, 42,549. So our simple math can see that there are more applications than there are spots. And what we want to show you is that UQ Oshner had a 98% match rate in 2022. And if you look down that column, you can see that our match rate has improved from, the, from 2015 and has remained in the 90 percentile since then. When you compare us to U.S. medical senior graduating, the rate is, was 93% this year, 2022 and 2021. So we are comparable. So you'll be able to be as successful, if not more, with completing your degree with us. Next column is for DO seniors. And you can see that that rate of matching has gone down, 91%, 89%. And if you look lower, they were in the low 80s for several years. Uh, the next column are the non-US international medical grads. And that rate is really lower than what we see with our school. That's 58%, 55%, and 61%. What you need to take away from this chart is that completing your training at Oshner and UQ will allow you to match, and we want you to be a part of that and have that same success. Next slide. All right, so what do we do to help our students be successful? We provide a lot of mentoring and advising. And as Dr. Amity mentioned, we have societies and we have other resources for you. The student-driven so special interest groups allow you to get information about the specialty you're interested in, 
exposure to potential mentors, and just that opportunity to know how to make yourself a great candidate for that residency. We also do an annual career day, and that allows you to hear from specialists in areas that you are interested in. Now, in addition, you'll have individual residency advising, and that comes often from your society head, but you can also get mentoring from someone in that specific specialty. There's counseling within specialties, career development. We also focus on match strategies and the timelines. It's important for us to keep you on track so you don't miss a deadline. You can have the best application, but if you miss the deadline, it's equal to the worst application. All right, we also do mock interviews, and this is important because it can be difficult to, to get comfortable presenting yourself. And having that one first interview to shake off the cobwebs is helpful. Since everything has been Zoom, we've done Zoom mock interviews. So we are always ahead of the game. We know what's going to happen, what you're going to experience, and we like to get you prepared. We also give advice on the application as a whole. We review your personal statement and your curriculum vitae so that we make sure you can present the best application possible. Next slide. So where have some of our students matched? Well, a lot of times we get questions, uh, especially from our uh, applicants that are coming from the West Coast. Can I match in California? So if we start off with pediatrics, you see that the answer is yes, you can. And you can match on the West Coast with Oregon. So we have UCLA Harbor, we have Oregon Health Science, Bay State listed there under pediatrics, University of Arkansas and University of Chicago. Very competitive pediatric residency programs. In ob -GYN, we have the competitive programs of University of Texas, Houston, University of Hawaii, and Bridgeport Hospital. For internal medicine, we have listed Ashner Health. It is always important for us to keep as many students as possible because we know the product we produce. Our students are excellent and they go on to be excellent physicians and we like them to stay with us if possible. We know that everyone won't stay, but we are always excited when you do. Uh, we also have matched our internal medicine uh, candidates at the University of South Florida, Oregon Health, and Tulane University in New Orleans. We've had successful emergency medicine matches at Ashner Health, Duke University, LSU New Orleans, University of Florida, University of New Mexico, and Yale University. You can match in surgery, and we've had successful matches at Brigham and Women's, Guthrie Robert Packer, UCLA Harbor, Duke University as well. And for anesthesiology, we've matched at Ashner, Loma Linda, University of Arkansas, University of Buffalo, and University of Mississippi. So just looking at this slide, you see that we've matched at very, very competitive programs and our applicants have been successful in various specialties. Next slide. So what about 2022? Well, we were very, very happy with the results of our match for 2022. And our graduates were accepted in very competitive prestigious residency programs. You can see listed on the left, Ashner Health, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, University of Connecticut, Emory University, Dartmouth University, Baylor College of Medicine, and Leahy Clinic. And on the right-hand side, you can see the different specialties that they were able to match in. Um, dermatology is listed there, general surgery, orthopedics. So our applicants have been able to match across specialties and within two prestigious programs. Next slide. So let's talk about academic entry requirements. Next our medical program follows the calendar year, which is different from U.S. medical schools. We start in January, we finish in November. This means that applications are open in November, and it's for the class that will enter in January 2024. All right, some key things you should know is that we have free in-house applications, so there's no cause for you to apply to our school. There's no secondary application. It's a very simple process. We do not require or request letters of recommendations, personal statements, or resume. We do have two prerequisites that are required, and we'll go over those. So unlike U.S. medical schools, you do not have to go through biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, statistics, calculus, but you have to have these two prerequisites because we know that those students who have these prerequisites are most likely to be successful in the program. 
And you can start your application even if you haven't done your MCAT yet. So if you're thinking about it, start the application. Next slide. So we have three requirements in the beginning of our process. You need an MCAT score of a minimum of 504. Our GPA minimum is a B as a cumulative average for your bachelor's or master's degree. And then the subject prerequisites are integrative cell and tissue biology and systems physiology. We know schools call their subjects different things. And so it's important for you to understand that it doesn't have to be this exact title. Equivalent coursework will be accepted. Our admissions team in, uh, at University of Queensland will review your coursework and let you know if it fits the requirements that are expected. Next slide. So after you fill, fill those three requirements, you'll be invited to interview. And we use the structure of a multiple mini interview. And what this does, it allows us to assess the personal qualities you have, things like your empathy, integrity, adaptability, and your verbal communication skills. All of these are important when interacting with patients, and we want to make sure that you are capable of doing that in an in a excellent fashion. Next slide. So how much does it cost? All medical schools are expensive but you are paying for your future. Uh, what you need to know is that it's $67,456 is the current annual fee, but UQ is accredited by the United States Department of Education to administer different need-based loans to those who are eligible and their parents as a part of uh, what's called the William D. Ford Direct Loan Program. Next slide, please. that is in US dollars. Um, in addition, um, for funding, we have an opportunity for you. Ashner Physician Scholars Program is an excellent opportunity for you to defray the cost of medical school. You would be awarded $135,000 towards your medical expenses. And you would get this in exchange for committing to work at Ashner Health Facility for five years after completing your residency. This is for those uh, applicants who are interested in primary care, and that would include family medicine, internal medicine, pediatric and internal medicine dual certification programs, and it has to be a primary care focus, as well as psychiatry. And so this is an opportunity for you to defray your costs. Uh, working at Ashner for five years is nothing. I've entered 15 years this month and it's been an excellent experience. So ob is not considered a part of primary care for what we need here. We're looking to improve the health of those citizens in the Gulf South. And so these are the specialties that we need. We need family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics with the combination of internal medicine, primary care track, and psychiatry. Next slide. So our application process is very simple. So it opens in November and you would submit through the website listed there on the screen. If you fulfill those requirements, you would then um, be selected for an interview. The interviews would take place in the fall until the class is full. This would make it a good idea for you to apply early because once the class starts to fill up, the opportunities decrease. And offers are made starting after our first interview all the way through to the end. All right, so here are the demographics of our class. The gender Division is almost equal, 49.6% male, 50.4% female. Our students tend to be a little bit older. Most have had other careers and other opportunities. So this makes your class very interesting, creative, and very uh, full of diversity in terms of life experience. So the age, average age range is 25 years. The MCAT average score is 508. And the average GPA for the master's is 3.45 and bachelor's are 3.4. So we have excellent students in our class.
All right, we have come to the end of that presentation. Seems like we have a good amount of stuff in the chat room, so we'll go ahead and pass it on over to Sue and see if we can get some questions and answers going. Okay, uh, so Zoe did have some questions about if her prereqs would fulfill, and I did want to say that the best way to find that out is by applying, because then the ass international assessment team picks up your application and makes that determination. Otherwise, if, if you email, it's a slower process, but it, it goes right into processing if you apply. So that is the best way. Um, the cost was in US dollars, as, you, as Dr. Webb mentioned. And then we have a question about OBGYN is not considered part of primary care. And then Ray, Rayhan, I'm not ex exactly sure. You said, would triple board certification in PEDS adult and child psych count. And I think you might be referring to the uh, psychiatry. Yes, yes, for psychiatry, we would have to evaluate it, but it should fulfill the requirements. But there needs to be an adult component, but your application would be reviewed. And then there's a question about neurology falling under that medicine umbrella. No. It does not fall under um, internal medicine, um, and it does not fall under primary care for what we need for our population. And Sharon would like to know if interviews are conducted in person or virtually. We are currently conducting our interviews virtually, and we've done so since the pandemic, and we'll continue with the next cycle of interviews. Calista is wondering if our application is currently open right now. And yes, not. you can apply um, and they'll let you know if there's additional information needed as we move forward. Um, okay, neurology, okay. What is the latest date to submit an MCAT score? So that would depend on our fill limit and how we're uh, progressing through. We continue to interview throughout the fall until we approach the fill of our, our fill limit of our class of 90 students. So it varies each year. We suggest that you do have it by, you do take your um, MCAT before June 30th though, to, to give you the best chance. Which hospital location do you have to complete? What hospital do you have to complete your five, five years? So there's not a specific hospital location. There are multiple systems within the Oshner Health System and you will be placed where the most need is necessary. Is where the most need is, where there's the most need. How about that? Dr. Webb, is that 504 MCAT a hard cutoff? Yes. Okay, more questions about the MCAT latest date. And um, Leah, you said you're, take, you're taking it April 14th, so that's before June 30th, so that would be fine. Um, we have Amelia who was planning on applying in May for matriculation in January, 2024. She's wondering, should she apply this month or wait until next November? So if you are applying, wanting, wanting to start class in January, 2024, that would be the this November. I believe- And it's better for you to apply early because you increase your chances of getting an interview before the uh, class starts to fill. Okay, uh, we have a question from Calista again about she's planning on taking the prerequisite courses in the future. So wants to know how would she indicate that on the application so they're still eligible for the interview. Um, actually, when you submit an application, the international assessment team will review your application. And if there's anything missing at all, they would contact you. So they'd probably inquire with you about your plans for taking these prerequisite courses. Will cell physiology be considered a part of the system's physiology? Again, that Jalisa, that is something that the assessment team will consider once you submit your application. Okay. 
Okay, since the fourth year ends in November, how does this affect when we apply for match? Do we apply before we finish the fourth year or would we be in the following year match? So you, you apply before you finish your fourth year and you will finish before the standard US medical students finish. What this allows you is a larger opportunity to interview. And most of our students remain active in terms of research and other activities in that gap period before they start residency. So it is actually an advantage because you don't have the limitations of rotations and your schedule's more open to accept interviews. Okay, Samara asks, what's the average class size? So usually about 90 to 100. Okay. And then Mariam asks, what is the racial diversity like in Brisbane and the Brisbane campus and in Louisiana campus? So I can speak for the Louisiana campus. There's a large amount of diversity in New Orleans. And so, um, but from an Australia standpoint, um, I don't have those stats. Um, I know that there are Aboriginal uh, people there and Torres Strait Islanders, but the question towards African-American, Hispanic, I don't have those numbers. There are also students that are from uh, Asia, all parts of Asia, from East and Western parts of Europe, from Canada, from the United States, and also South America. So it's a very diverse group of students that are there that you will get to interact with. And Linda perhaps can tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, definitely. Actually, being that is a great segue, Dr. Amity. I loved it so much. Sue, we're going to take a quick pause on questions. I just wanted to knock some of them out of the chat room. And then we'll go over to Linda John and she can give us her experience. Um, let us know where you come from undergrad, um, why you chose UQ, and then your um, process or your uh, portion of the OMSA being the vice president. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Linda John. So I'm a current third year and the incoming OMSA vice president. Um, so a little bit about me, I am from Provo, Utah. I went to University of Utah for undergrad. I love all things outdoors like skiing and climbing. There's a lot of reasons why I chose um, to go to UQ Oshner for med school. I mean, besides the obvious, it's a highly competitive program with great match rates. And But like in honesty, it's just because I've had an absolutely amazing time in this program. Um, just talking to my friends and other programs, um, the experience I've had is just unparalleled. Um, the first two years in Brisbane is just one big giant adventure. There's honestly so much to do to experience and to explore and it was a really really good learning environment for me I just felt there was such a good balance between going to school and enjoying things outside of studying um, and I actually just really missed my first two years in Australia so I'm really excited that I have the opportunity to go back next year for my fourth year rotation and then this year in New Orleans, it's actually another whole new adventure. Um, the culture here in New Orleans is so rich and there's no lack of good food. Um, there's just never been a dull moment in my med school experience. Um, and I have loved all the people I have met, the friends, the community I have both in Brisbane and in New Orleans. And Overall, I feel this program has really prepared me well for clinical rotations this year and feeling comfortable with the patients, being able to work and talk with the residents, the attendings. Um, it just all feels really natural and comfortable. So I have really, really enjoyed my entire time. I have loved seeing medicine practice um, between the two places, how it's the same, how it's different. Um, as for diversity over in Brisbane, that question, um, I agree with Dr. Amity, there is people from all over. I think UQ tries to get a lot of um, diversity into their school, um, a lot of international students. So I don't think there's a lack of diversity on the Brisbane side of things. 
And now just a little bit about OMSA. So OMSA is the Ochsner Medical Student Association. Um, we're a student advocacy group um, representing specifically the Ochsner students um, in the program. And we're just involved in matters um, that are basically um, all aspects of med school for us. So that includes academics, research, um, community outreach. We um, we organize activities such as volunteer opportunity, um, volunteer opportunities and social events such as like field day and fall ball. Just are a few of the things that OMSA is involved in. So um, that's about it from me. If you guys have any um, direct questions that you want to email me about and don't want to ask here, um, you guys can always send me a direct email at omsavp at .org. I'd be happy to answer you guys from a uh, current med student perspective that way too. I can see a quick question came in. Can you explain what OMSA stands for again? Yeah, so OMSA is the Oster Med um, Medical Student Association. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, being that you're now in your third year and you've gone through a few years of everything, um, since we have a few perspectives on the line, what piece of advice would you have given yourself at this point where they are? Um, I would just say, if you really feel strongly about this program and you're just wavering a little, I would take the leap and do it. I have absolutely um, no regrets applying and going here. Um, and like I said, my experience is unparalleled and I truly, truly love this program. So just do it. Did you apply to any U.S. medical schools at all or was it just UQ Oshner? So I actually just applied to UQ Oshner. So I did it really early. I got my offer in May. So it was before the U.S. cycle opened up. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, we'll go back over. Oh, let's see. You mentioned going back to Australia for rotations. Is there a specific time that is done or can it be done anytime in rotations? So we go back in our fourth year. Um, we have six rotations in fourth year, like six big block of rotations, and you kind of preference when you would go back. So it could be any time during fourth year, essentially. And remember that that is an institutional requirement on the UQ side, particularly for those students to that want to go back and practice in Australia. That that comes with your medical degree allowing you to practice anywhere in the United States and Australia. That's a requirement of the Australian Medical Council. Um, Linda, I don't know if you have any friends that are planning to return to Australia. Um, do you know of anyone? I can say we do have about five students a year actually minimum return to Australia every year to practice um, but do you have any friends mentioning such um, yeah I know actually quite a, f a couple of people at least like fully committed to matching in Australia um, just because they one of them is truly because they've loved Australia so much and then of course there are the people who find their significant others and want to um, spend time with that significant other in Australia so there are definitely people committed already. Um, do you share your class with other international students or Australian students at UQ? Yes, there is definitely other international students. There's a large group of Canadians. Um, and then there's definitely people from all over the world. But I think it's when you think about the class, there's the Oshner cohort, there's the international students, and then there's the Australia, like natives. So it is kind of separated into three groups. Um, if you know right now, when you return to Australia for that rotation, is it a specific rotation or can it be in different specialties? It is not a specific rotation, but it is one of the rotations in fourth year that you have to go through, if that makes sense. Um, uh, what are, what did you find to be difficult being so far away from home? 
Well, so for me, my class was special um, since we are the class that went through the pandemic. Usually people are able to come home during year one and year two for Christmas. My class was the one that had to stay there the entire time for the two years. So it was just really hard being committed to not come home for two years. But we did it. And I think it just made our class even closer and made us more resilient. So <laughs> and also a good experience. Please understand that during the holidays uh, in Australia, during the pandemic time, uh, they celebrate the holidays in a very unique way, uh, particularly the, the Christmas season uh, is, is their summer, the beginning of their summer. So it's not uncommon to see a bunch of people dressed as Santa Claus on the beach. Um, it's just a traditional way that they celebrate in Australia. But uh, they also have a traditional turkey dinner that they serve. And there's wild turkeys that run all around the campus in Brisbane. I don't think they serve any of those, just to, to joke with you a little bit. But they try to be conscious of what the international students are, are, tip, are typically celebrating at any time of the year. So they're very accommodating in that regard. Um, this one can go to Linda and maybe also you, Dr. Amity. Um, is there a big or large difference in the way Australia and the U.S. practice medicine? Um, I can answer that first. So I do think there's more similarities than differences. But honestly, when it comes to how medicine is practiced differently, more has to do with like the healthcare model, not like the physician themselves, if that makes sense. Because I think doctors themselves practice the same regardless in both countries. But because of the healthcare model, there's just different processes. Please understand that the majority of the population in Australia is on the West Coast or the East Coast. There's a vast wasteland kind of in between, but yet there are people that are living in those areas. So telemedicine has been something that's been very popular in Australia um, and is getting even more popular. And there's a huge emphasis at all the medical schools in Australia on primary care. And there's national health system. So Australia is different from us. So everyone receives um, health coverage. And that's the difference between the delivery. Thank you guys for that. Um, I'll actually pass it back over to Sue to see if we missed any questions. Well, I see that there's a little, a uh, few questions about the prerequisites remaining. And to explain that, um, if you do send in your application and you do not pass the requirement, UQ will uh, give you some options of what you can take, or if you find something that you think might work, they will work with you to find what you need to fulfill that. You don't have to have that complete before applying. You can be working on your prerequisites during your after you apply to, to the school. And if rejected, then they will work with you to find something that will fulfill the requirement, and then you can work to, to complete the course. And then there were a few questions about the application. Actually, the application did close just the other day, and we are going to reopen it towards the end of the month. So I'll be looking for that. We don't have the specific date yet. Usually there's some tweaks that might happen with the application. And once it's ready to post, we will post it. So. I would say the end of the month, maybe by November 28, just check our admissions page out and make sure that it is open. You'll see the square that says apply now. So um, I, Sue, I saw a question about class size. Uh, they, they're saying there's Oxford component, Canadian component, international component in the locals uh, from Australia. Class size is about 450. And our cohort is about 100. The Canadians are about 85 to 90 and the rest from around the world and from Australia. Thank you, Dr. Amity. You might also want to answer this question about our school being friendly for a non-traditional student who's been working for some time now. And um, so to come and join our class, uh, what, how is our class towards non-traditional students? Very friendly as a matter of fact, but again, the requirements as specified by Dr. Webb still are in, in existence and need to be met. Um, but as she pointed out in her presentation, the, the makeup of our student body is a lot of students that come from other backgrounds that have done other things. They've, they've taught, they've, they've um, been in sales force, so they work for a Fortune 500 company, but they've had other jobs and have come back to medicine. And I think that's one of the reasons um, they are so dedicated 
Uh, they're very focused on what they want at the end of the four years and why we've been so successful in the match. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Emily. Um, you can apply and be interviewed prior to finishing your coursework or to finishing your prereqs. And I'm not sure about this question uh, or the answer to this question. Do students visit the Australia campus? You know, during COVID, no, but are they open to campus visits in Australia? If you have the resources, I, I I think there would be an opportunity for you to visit. It's a it's a big place, right smack dab in the middle of Brisbane. Um, it's a beautiful campus, as a matter of fact. And these trees that are over our heads here, Dr. Webb and I, those are jacaranda trees, which are unique to that part of Australia. And actually, they'll be blooming in the not too distant future, uh, springtime. And springtime, they're getting ready to head into or in it already. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful time on the campus. And for interviews, to the requirements to be interviewed, you would have to be enrolled in those prerequisites or have fulfilled that. You would have to have met that 504 or above on the MCAT and international admissions assessment team would have determined that you have a B or above in your GPA and then you can be interviewed. Okay, uh, there's a question about finding roommates and being introduced to each other. And um, is it possible to bring your dog? So um, I can actually answer that. There's When you are accepted or extended an offer, you receive a link to your, your class's Facebook page. And that's where all the networking for roommates go on. We also had an admitted students day where everyone could see all their classmates in a virtual format, just like this. And actually on the Facebook page, everyone does a little bio, introduces themselves, and then they, they continue on with these types of discussions for networking for roommates and housing. And then um, it is possible to bring a dog, but I think it costs about $10,000. So uh, I'd say give it some thought and you can investigate that. That's also a question that I've seen on the Facebook page. I'll go with the next question to Dr. Webb. Um, is the 504, how strict are we with that 504 MCAT? Can we be considered with less than a 504? No, we don't consider with less than a 504. That's a, a hard stop for our school. Okay. Uh, Dr. Amity, are classes pass fail right now or do we have grades? They're going to pass fail. Actually, currently they're a seven point grading scale. Uh, but as they move into the new curriculum in January of 2023, it will be pass fail. Okay. Dr. Webb, is a post back GPA considered? So it would have to be a terminal degree. Um, and so those grades will be considered, but it has to be a part of a degree. It can't just be separate classes. Uh, question about curriculum. When taking courses in year one and two, are, are they foundational courses with the other UQ students, or are they foundational courses just with the students, the UQ Ashner cohort? I think the only difference in curriculum is this second half of the second year when our cohort of students receives the preparatory course for USMLE step one. Otherwise, you're totally integrated in, in all the students in all the same classes, same curriculum for all. Okay. And what about rotations? Are they only at Ashner or can go to other schools? I think we talked about that, right? Your ability to visit other medical schools and do rotations in the United States is going to take place primarily in your fourth year as part of the VSAT program. Um, so you have a lot of opportunity to, to do that. Um, but by that particular time, you probably have combed down on what you're planning to focus on in your residency. And those away rotations can be very important, very instrumental to you in terms of uh, acquiring a successful residency match. And with the new curriculum, that second half of the fourth year is going to give a lot of freedom. So I, I think, again, our students will be advantaged in this arrangement. I had a question, Dr. Webb. Um, how do we consider or look at multiple MCATs? 
So you would submit your highest. It does not um, have an ill effect on you if you have taken the more at the MCAT more than once. As long as you do make the 504, that's what you would submit. Okay. Um, is lecture attendance mandatory? Or are you able to watch recorded versions asynchronously? Le lecture is mandatory. So Linda, <laughs> tell what people normally do. Okay, so it depends on which lectures you're talking about. There are big lectures, like the core lectures that are every day, that's with all 450 people. Those aren't mandatory. So those are recorded or you can go in person hopefully now again because during COVID there was a while you can't um, but they are recorded or they're live so you can ask questions um, but then you are actually in your own little individual groups about 10 students so that you can get more attention to your education everything that's in those little groups like lectures or um, case-based learning those are 100% mandatory. If that, yeah, just two routes of learning. Linda, you might also be able to respond to what are the, um, the support, what's the support that's received for mental and emotional health while in Australia? So yeah, um, there is student advocacy groups specifically for the med students at the Oshner campus. Um, I know Jacinta over there is in charge. She's super, super great. Um, they do also have therapy sessions available for students when needed. And then they also have um, student like learning plans available if you like need help with just like your learning method. So anything from just plain old needing help with studying to your mental health, they do support that at the UQ campus. All right, and I do see we have questions about the different degrees that are received. It is your most terminal degree. It's not a cumulative GPA that's reviewed. It's the degree, the GPA received on your most recently obtained degree is the GPA that is calculated. Um, if you have a different type of post back degree that does not um, offer a post back program that doesn't offer a degree. It does have to be a degree program. So if you have a post back that's not weighed in, unless it was to cover your prerequisites, then they check that off as covering prerequisites, but it is not part of your GPA. Your only most recent de obtained degree is part of as what's calculated. And can we speak a little bit about anatomy lab and what does that look like? And is there a professor that teaches this course? So again, there are main anatomy lectures. So those are the big lectures I talked about. And then you're broken down into individual lab sessions where you would go to the actual anatomy lab. Okay. Can you explain further? Is the, are there cadavers that a uh, team will work on or is it already... How is the anatomy lab? Yeah, so there is an actual anatomy lab with cadavers. Um, they've changed the style a little bit since I've started just because of, again, it's actually COVID and social distancing reasons. It used to be that um, it was kind of like there was a bunch of teaching assistants and you would get into little groups around different cadavers and there would be a list of objectives that you're supposed to identify. Now they've done it station based where just because of the social distance where they've actually have everything on the cadaver that you're supposed to identify pinned. And like, it's kind of like a line that you go around the room and you spend time at each station answering certain questions or asking the teaching assistants questions on that specific pinned cadaver. Lynn, so I'm happy I don't to report that changed change. this year. So that's good. <laughs> We're back to the former situation you described. Okay. Looks like questions have slowed if you have All any. right. So we'll definitely start uh, wrapping up. Um, Dr. Amity and Dr. Webb, if you guys have any final words you would like to give, um, Dr. Amity, you can go ahead. 
So unlike voting that's coming up next week, I would encourage you all to apply early uh, based on what this year's uh, recruitment cycle looked like. We were almost completely full in the middle of the summer. So uh, those of you that are planning to take an MCAT in April and, and you know, I can't guarantee anything at that point. I would try to be as proactive as possible. And our best, our best recruitment for our particular school has actually been our graduates and our, our students that have graduated and are out in residency. We get residency program directors that call us now and say, how many more of these can you send us? So uh, the competition has actually uh, uh, really increased quite a bit. And part of the pass fail grading is actually to try to keep some of that competition down. Um, we realize everything is, is so competitive these days and there's a lot of issues around well-being and our personal resilience and mental well-being, et cetera. And in, in accord with a lot of US medical schools right now that have gone to pass fail in the past few years for that very reason, to try to keep the competition down to a manageable level. Thank you all for attending tonight, Dr. Webb. So I would say that I've worked with the medical school since it started. And what you need to know is that our students are adventurous and they are the types of students who are willing to take the chance to go to another country to learn in another culture. And they bring back a wealth of information that is transformative to us at Oshner because we're in New Orleans all the time. And so they bring back a different perspective. I've had the pleasure of having students become my colleagues. It's been so many years. And this has been one of the best experiences, just seeing the transition from a student to a physician and the quality of medicine that they practice. So I'm honored to be a part of the school and it's been a pleasure. And I think you would do nothing but have success if you became a part of it as well. Thank you, Dr. Webb and Dr. Amity. Um, any last um, positive tip, Linda? Yeah, I would just say, um, don't be afraid to ask current student questions. Like I said, shoot me an email if you have any specific questions, because I know it's really big um, and scary to do a program like this. And like Dr. Webb said, it's, it takes a special character to do this. And I believe it exists in all of you, so. All right, thank you. I wanna say thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to all of our guests who have attended. Um, it was a pleasure for us to present this information to you on this evening. We definitely look forward to your applications and those names popping up in the applications. Um, if you guys have any questions, please visit the website. Um, you can also book one-on-ones to speak with students if you like. Um, thank you again and have a good evening. Thank you.